The syllabus asks you to understand the basics of digital radio transmission in Australia. We use a broadcast technique called DAB+, Digital Audio Broadcasting+. Plus. It's based around quadrature phase shift keying, which I've spoken about beforehand. That was quadrature means there's four phases. So it's transmitting at 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270 degrees to give an indication of two data points. So it's just transmitting and changing phase at a set frequency to transfer through the digital code. So we've got specific phase shifts to indicate which data is being transmitted. So DAB uses quad phase shift keying. The reason why you don't have analogue television available in Australia anymore is because it's now being used as the digital broadcast spectrum. There's only so many frequencies available to um, transmit on and every one of them has a purpose to um, broadcast digital radio on and digital television on. Advantage in digital radio is multiple stations like you can have four different stations sharing the same frequency because the packets, um, data is sent in packets, the data structure, it might say I'm sending out the next half seconds worth of audio. We're going to have a look at how the compression actually works next. But so it just says, here's the start of the broadcast, this is the time sequence here when I'm sending out the audio for this channel. This is when I'm sending out the audio for the second channel, so it might be Today FM, it might be 2GB, a talk station. Music needs a lot wider bandwidth than voice. So, talk stations are a lot cheaper to broadcast digitally than music stations. They um, actually can split the channel depending on what they're broadcasting, and they do quite often. So. It says that's where it is and then the receiver just picks this little part of the signal out and just decodes that. If you're tuned into this channel, it knows to look for that part of the signal and it only listens to that. Now, how does the signal actually get compressed? It in, the syllabus asks how do you modulate it? Modulation means how do you go from analogue, the sound, to the digital signal. I'm going to put a link down the bottom in the video of a great explanation that doesn't use the complicated maths. The compression is AAC, Advanced Audio Codec. It's better than MP3 compression. For a given bandwidth or given kilobits per second produces a lot clearer, a lot sharper, a lot more dynamic sound than mp3 so digital audio uses the better compression technology first thing it sends through this signal then it sends through halfway through that time band it sends through this one then it sends through that one so the information gets sent across twice so if there's a glitch in the signal it can rebuild it as you know, sound waves have a range of amplitudes. Let's sample that sound wave from a minimum value of zero to a maximum value of 65,535, which is 2 to the power 16 take away 1. If that's an analogue sound wave, we've got to convert it to digital. The two steps involved are to sample it at a set frequency and then to quantise it, give it the value. So we get a range of numbers we're working with. Once we have got a range of numbers, then the computer can actually take over. AAC produces a discrete Fourier transformation. How the Fourier transformation works is, let's pick a cos value. Let's say 32,000 is the average. Zero is the minimum, 65,000 is the maximum. A cos function looks something like this and down it goes again. This, however, as you can see, it's 32,000. So the value here is cos. It might be 32. It's 
it's actually 65,535 cos of x. As you know, the values of cos x go from plus 1 to minus 1. By shifting it up, let's make the values go from 0 to 2. As I've drawn it shifted up there. Which means this graph here is a... That's 32,767. Cos x is what I'm looking at there. That's not really a close approximation to this signal. We might consider adding sin x. Maybe we want to add half of sin x. Let's just draw that way for me. That is point 0.2 of sin x added. So point 0.2 of that is whatever one-fifth of that is, that's 6,553 sine x. That's that number there. Now when I add 1 and 2 together, I get that there as that one's dropping, that one's rising, so it's going up. That one there is tracking down a bit. That one there is tr still tracking down. That plus that is there, so I've undershot there. I'm still undershot. And so on. That looks something like that. See how I'm getting closer? I'm pretty close to the sine wave there. Now I might add cos 2x, sine 2x. And what I do is I create a series of numbers that represent the mathematical function. Like this, I'm going to rub out this part of the board now and just go through how it's transformed into a digital number. So what I might end up with for half a second of music, I can transfer it into a mathematical function. Let's say I've made this up. It equals that. Cos x. The function looks like that, cos 2x, the function looks like so, cos 3x. When you add them all together you start to get different sums and you can produce any wave at all, even a square wave, by adding sine waves. Fouillet. Really intelligent man. You don't need to know how to do this for the HSC. You just need to know them. So they quantise it, they use cos waves and add them up to produce a signal. That's the basics of the modulation of a digital signal. So, now, my, my um, information that I'm sending, these numbers are all conveniently 16-bit. So I'm going to go... 32,767. 6,553 4217 327 16 0 because there's no oh sorry it's 0 because there's no cos 2x cos 3x 16 so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers to send to describe half a second of music it gets converted into a tiny fraction of the sample, gets sent over, demodulation, your radio picks up. There's the time band, there's the magic numbers I need. It listens out for those magic numbers, it recreates the signal, and it plays it back out your radio. That's how digital radio works. So it gets those numbers, all these numbers get converted into binary numbers, ones and zeros, base two. They get converted using quadrature phase shift keying into the signal that's sent out. The receiver then gets that signal, reads the numbers, recreates the sound wave, pumps it out the speaker. So all you're doing is you've turned a sound wave into a series of mathematical functions and just sit the mathematical function over the airwaves. Remember as well the advantage of this advanced audio codec is it sends the signal twice. 
So if there's our sound wave, it sends this bit, then it sends this bit, then it sends this bit, then it sends that bit, so all the sound waves overlap. So if there's an error in transmission, it gets picked up and fixed, improving its accuracy of transmission.